So welcome to my YouTube channel. Now that's what we call The Good Life. Now today I'm going to be talking about all the jobs you can be doing in September on your allotment. Now if you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my allotment, my home garden, and from time to time, my home kitchen. Well today, we're up at the allotment and I'm going to take you for a little wander around and tell you some of the things you could be doing. Um, September is the time of year where some of the foliage is starting to die down um, and things are starting to slow down a little bit. Although sometimes it doesn't seem like that when you're harvesting but the good news is is that the weeds do start to slow down and that's something that I think we all look forward to so that we can all keep our plot a little bit tidier. If you're thinking that your plot's a little bit of a mess at the moment we came up here the other day and probably spent a good hour just weeding and we couldn't believe how many weeds we got off and um, so don't get downhearted when you think gosh there's just weeds everywhere I'm failing here because you're not it's normal weeds are going to grow and you just have to do the best you can to get rid of them as long as your crops are doing okay then it really doesn't matter I mean this whole area we had loads of weeds everywhere and it's still not perfect by any chunk of the imagination but it's a lot tidier than it was so now one of the things you can be doing at the moment is harvesting there's such a lot to harvest and if you're anything like me it can seem a little bit overwhelming you're continually harvesting continually freezing continually baking and preserving and finding people that take things that you can't manage um, I'm trying to preserve and freeze as much and eat as much stuff as I can for myself to take me through the winter um, but I can only keep so much so that's where your friends and family get some nice welcome surprises now one of the things I'm harvesting at the moment are my beans and they are doing really really well it's got to be one of the best years we've had here for beans and um, I think the climate's just been about right you know it's not been too hot it's not been too dry it's been just right as they say and um, one of the easiest ways I think to harvest beans is just like a little stretchy bag like this just to, to put them in you can do your baskets but I find sometimes it's a lot easier um, to put things like this into a bag so i've got two types of beans i've got french beans and i've got runner beans and all of them are doing equally well and i could easily come up here every couple of days and harvest some and every single time i come up here and i harvest a few i'm always amazed how many i'm getting and um, so i've got we're eating loads of our meals nearly every single meal has beans with it and we're freezing loads and we're also giving loads away. So one of the things that we did recently, I mean, these are one of the things that if it doesn't rain enough, it is worth giving them some water. Um, and we've got our own comfrey feed that we put on these, but we actually um, cut off our comfrey plants going absolutely bonkers. And we actually cut some of the comfrey leaves and laid them in and around because they put the right nutrients in the soil. So we actually mulched a little bit around our beans because it will naturally slowly go into the plants and create its own fertilizer because things like beans these can easily go on for several months we might be in august and they may very well start to slow down um, but you can easily be picking beans off these for a good couple more months now. You really, really can. So it's worth looking after them. And um, if you haven't got comfrey feed, then obviously maybe feeding them with a, you know, with a, with a, with some feed. Um, but at least keep them well watered so you'll get a continuous supply of beans. I mean, look at the runner beans as well. Absolutely got tons of them. I will come back and finish picking these off because these are probably going to take me a fair while to finish off. So I will hang my bag up. And I will pop back later and do that. So as we move over, um, I've got all my squashes and courgettes here. Um, so the courgettes I've marked with a bottle on the top of each cane so I know which is which, more when other people come, so they know not to harvest the wrong things if they're looking after my plot while I'm away. Um, I see a lot of people harvesting their squashes too soon. Um, typically, you need to wait until more like October time. You know, they need, they need to ripen. That being said, if one looks like it's ripened, you can harvest one and eat it straight away. But as a general rule of thumb, I will leave all my squashes on here until they've completely matured and I know some people say to nip off the small ones and take off the the shoots that are coming out because we live in Kent we get quite a long um, you know it stays warm for a lot longer here I generally find that I will these will still keep producing a few more squashes so I only nip the ends out of my 
um, squashes if they're getting in the way. Otherwise, I just let them be. And that was a tip that someone gave me quite some years ago. I just let them do whatever they want to do. The only thing I do do is I sometimes just thin the leaves out a little, a little bit because it helps with, um, with mildew that you can get on the leaves. But again, you still get a little bit. Um, on the leaves, but just sometimes thinning just the leaves themselves out a little bit. You know, actually, if you get like a, a manky looking one like that, you just cut it right down to the end, just the leaf, obviously being quite careful not to cut any of the fruits off. So that's about the only thing I do do, but other than that, I just leave them be. I've got a couple that I think are almost ripe enough, so I might just cut one um, and, and eat it straight away. But the thing is, if you start cutting them off too soon and they're not ripe, you know, you're waiting for the stems to completely die off. And all the while the stems are all still fresh looking, if you cut that off now and tried to store it, um, it would probably not store very well. You're waiting for the stems on squashes to brown off and they'll be quite hard and dry. Well, if you follow me on, the vi on these videos, you'll see what mine look like when I start harvesting mine. Um, so yeah, they're going to stay on there for a fair bit longer. So if you want to take a quick look, I've got some lovely passive pan courgettes coming along there. You can either pick them small like that or you can let them get a little bit bigger. So obviously with courgettes you just pick them when you're ready. You don't need to wait for them to mature. You just pick them when they're at the right size for you. Got some lovely Lebanese over here as well which I can harvest off. So they're actually probably about a good size. I can take those off today. Um, as we move up we did a fair bit of weeding around the leeks because they were getting quite weedy. It was only a quick weed as you can see it leaves a little bit more work there. We've got lots of can under there. I think it's worth noting that we must still keep things netted because, you know, the pests are still absolutely rife at the moment. You know, I've seen loads of gigantic slugs, the biggest slugs I've ever seen. Um, so there's plenty of slugs still around, there's plenty of birds still around, there's plenty of the, the white cabbage butterfly. So we still need to ke keep everything netted to protect it. You know, and it won't be that long when we start to be thinking about protecting stuff from the frost in a few months' time. So that's something you could be thinking about as well. So up here I've got my carrots and my beetroot and my parsnips. So I've only just started harvesting my carrots and they're not too bad actually. I, I, I keep environment over them um, because I think it's the best way of protecting them from the carrot fly. So I don't need to put any chemicals or not that I think there is anything to protect you from carrot fly chemical wise, I don't even know. Um, but I very recently just started harvesting those and I've been very pleased with them. Let me get my fruit. what we've got in here so I know some people harvest a load all in one go personally I harvest what I need when I need it and I just leave it in the ground when it comes to carrots um, it's my own personal choice and I do that with an awful lot of things unless things have to be harvested oh, there's a little bit of a small one there I have had some really big ones oh that's not too bad Oh, we're getting some little stumpy ones today. I had some quite big long ones the other day when I pulled them out. Oh, that's a bit more like it, isn't it? There we go. They're not, too, they're not perfect, but they taste just as good. So not too bad carrots this year at the moment. So I have some good years and some bad years with carrots where absolutely nothing germinates. But this year, not too bad at all. I've already harvested some potatoes, um, which I've got in the basket there. So there's absolutely copious amounts of things to harvest at the moment. As you can see, one of my cucumbers over here has died off. They can be a little bit temperamental can cucumbers. They can be there one minute and not the next, but it's produced a really lovely, rather lovely one there. So I might as well take that one off and eat it. I've got loads more um, cucumbers at home. I've still got a few blackberries left, although they've nearly finished. Um, you may have some plums that you're harvesting at home. I've got tomatoes at home, I've got aubergines, I've got various other things. I'm harvesting my kale at the moment. My sweet corn isn't quite ready yet, but I think another few weeks on that, and hopefully I'll be harvesting that as well. I've got beetroots um, over there that I can harvest, and I've had a few beetroots already, and I've got plenty of chard and some lettuce and also some broccoli. So there's lots and lots of things you can be harvesting at the moment. So we're just going to head up to the composters. So as we go up, you can see I've still got a few blackberries left up there. 
and the pears are starting to come along really nicely. I took all my Bramley apples off the other day because otherwise they just fall off and they just rot. So if you've not taken your Bramley apples off, if they're coming off easily when you twist them, you probably need to get them off. Um, as we just move up to the composters. And um, that's a job you can be doing in September if you've not already done it. Um, we did that about a, you know, a few days ago. We moved each composter into each different area. Um, and we've actually got some, oh, nearly fell over the hose there. And um, we've actually got some really good compost at the end there, actually really composted down really, really well. So that's a job you can be doing. So we get a lot of people ask us, you know, what we do, apart from obviously just doing the, the allotment. Believe it or not, the allotment isn't, <laughs> isn't a, our full-time job, although sometimes it does seem like you spend a lot of time at the allotment because it's such a nice, it's a nice spot to be in. Um, but my husband and I actually run our own business together, um, helping other people reduce their bills down. Um, it's something that actually anyone can do. And if you're looking for an extra income or something so you can live um, a more sustainable life like we do, so we can work, you can work a little bit more on um, your own terms, then you can take a look if you want. There's a link um, just above my head, which you can um, click on if you want to, and there will be a link in the description. And you can contact us via that link as well. We're always happy to answer questions on how, if you want to do something different, how we could help you with that. Now, if we move down, oh, I've still got a little bit of rhubarb there as well. So September is last knockings if you want to get a bit of rhubarb off. So if you do want a little bit, it will really start to die down in September. So if you're going to harvest any, I'll get in at the moment, definitely. So, as we come down, move my fork out the way. I've got my comfrey over there, which we, um, that's our comfrey plant, very aptly sited next to our water butt, which we put the comfrey into and then we add water to it to create our own natural feed. It really, really smells by the way, so I warn you, I wouldn't go up the allotment after watering your allotment you're using your comfrey and go out somewhere nice. I would use it and then I would go home and maybe have a shower afterwards because it is quite stinky and hard to get off your hands. But it's free and it works really, really well. So, um, another thing you can be doing is sowing some seeds at the moment. So there's various things you can be sowing. Um, there's, um, you can be getting your onion sets and your garlic sets, which you could sow in September or sow in the next month. Um, you can be sowing some winter lettuce. I myself have sown some winter lettuce and some pak choy at home. And I also, a week ago, sowed some radishes and some turnips. I have to try and remember what I've sown myself. And look, they are popping through already. So can you believe that in a week, they've already started popping through? I'm absolutely astounded. You know, so you think this time of year stuff won't germinate, but actually the ground is really, really warm. You know, so there's lots of things you can be sowing in September. And um, one thing I was going to mention, it's not, not to sow now, but if you're getting a lot of slug damage on your potatoes, um, kestrels are a really good variety to sow. Ours has been all right, although we, we have got some kestrels in there, but these are Charlotte that I've been digging today. Now, obviously you wouldn't sow kestrel potatoes now, but I'm getting a lot of people asking me, what can I sow now in September? Now, if, if for, for potato-wise, if you wanted to sow potatoes for Christmas, you could sow Charlotte, they'd be perfectly good, and Red Duke of York are another popular one. But, you know, go to your garden centres and see what they've got available. Typically, you want fast-growing ones. Um, if you want more things that you can be sowing in September, um, there are some lettuces and various other things you can be sowing, but we do have a video on that, so please do watch that video, um, and that will give you lots of ideas of different things you can be sowing now in the month of September, rather than me on about it again. Now it's great been showing you around the allotment and telling you all the things you can do. Now I'd love to know what you're getting up to um, in the coming weeks and how things are going for you. So please do put some comments in the description and please do check out our other links if you're interested in some of the other things we do too.